Hello and welcome to uh, Equity Education, the chemistry version. And today we're going to be looking at dot and cross diagrams. Okay, so uh, this is going to be pretty quick because I reckon you've done this dot and cross diagrams in your lower level um, studying, such as for GCSEs. But still, you need to know it for A level, so we'll have a quick go through it. Okay, so dot and, dot and cross diagrams. Right, so. There are two types of dot and cross diagrams that can be drawn. One for covalent bonding. And the other for ionic bonding. Okay. So we'll start with ionic bonding. So ionic bonding is between a metal and a non metal. To form, an ionic to form an ionic compound, should be compounds, electrons are either lost or gained. To work out the charge on the iron, we need to look at the group number. If the element is in or below a group 3, electrons are lost. And these are examples of metals. So we'll put that in brackets. E.g. sodium. Sodium is in group 1. It has one outer electron. So it will lose one electron here to form a positive ion. OK. Moving on. Again, look at the group number. The element is in or above group 5, electrons are gained. And we'll do the example of chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7 and needs to gain one electron. Let's do that a bit better. It needs to gain one electron, leave a bit of space. Therefore, plus E minus forms Cl minus. And these are examples of non-metals. Right, so an example of a dot and cross diagram. So I have my positive metal ion, I have my positive negative ion, and I need to draw a dot and cross diagram. Well, how we do this? So we put our, excuse me, positive ion in brackets. It's lost an electron, so it has a positive charge. Chlorine has seven outer electrons and we have gained one electron from the sodium ion to form Cl minus. Notice here on my sodium I haven't shown any outer electron share uh, outer electrons because we've lost them all. You can draw the ring on here if you want to or you could just leave it like this blank. I think it's easy to leave it like blank so I'll leave it as that. Okay. Right, your turn. Let's have a go at drawing a dot and cross diagram for magnesium bromide. Okay, so it's slightly more difficult, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Okay, um, we'll do one more magnesium bromide, and let's do what should we do as another one? Let's do sodium sulfide. Okay, have a go at drawing them, and we'll go through it in a minute. Okay, I'm sure you've been able to do it, but we'll go through it. So, uh, first one, MgBr2. So, magnesium is in group 2. So, it loses two outer electrons. Bromine is in group 7. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's gained one electron from magnesium. And because it's gained one electron, we have a negative charge. Notice that this isn't balanced, two plus and one negative, so we need two bromine atoms. So I can write times two for my bromide atoms or ions. Apologies, bromide ions here. Okay, moving on to sodium. We know sodium's in group one, so it's plus. Remember, sulfur, you have to draw the outer electrons first. One, two, three. Four, five, six. 
it needs to gain two electrons and notice they're split to gain a two minus charge this is important they are split which means I need two sodium atoms pretty simple okay moving on covalent bonding so covalent bonding is between a non-metal and a non-metal and we say that electrons are shared between atoms okay so working out dot and cross diagrams for covalent bondings first you draw the central atom with its outer electrons every single electron must be paired up it needs a buddy and try to form as many covalent bonds as possible and then check to make sure each atom has a full outer electron shell right there's a further step but this is only if it is a polyatomic ion right if it's a poly polyatomic ion then we need to add or remove uh, excuse me electrons to get the overall charge on the polyatomic iron okay so we're usually adding electrons or we could we could add H plus as well so I'm going to change this a bit here so we don't really remove electrons that much so we add H plus or electrons because this will be in general what you'll be doing so add H plus or electrons to get the overall charge on the polyatomic iron this makes a bit more sense for probably your um, questions that you'll be doing okay we'll do an example so let's do it for methane okay so methane draw the central atom all right so my central atom is carbon I'm going to have one two three four because it's in group four and then I need to pair all these up because they're single unsurprisingly they're going to pair with four hydrogen atoms notice that my electrons are square uh, crosses and dots so dot and cross diagrams so the electrons from carbon are crosses and the electron from hydrogen is a dot or a circle okay check to make sure each atom is a full outer electron shell carbon should have eight one two three four five six seven eight which is does hydrogen should have two because it only can hold two electrons on the first shell one two one two one two one two which it does okay so there's another way to draw this and I'll, I'll do it um, so you don't have to draw the um, rings or circles if you don't want to so you can draw it like this this is perfectly fine as well and we can see that there's a shared pair of electrons so it must be a covalent bond okay your turn so draw dot and cross diagrams for a chlorine molecule nitrogen molecule an ammonium ion and a hydroxide iron okay so the last two are slightly more complicated but if you follow step five you should be able to work it out okay I'll give you uh, ten minutes to do this okay right so let's go through it so chlorine has seven outer electrons so one two three four five six seven it needs to pair up with another electron here and unsurprisingly it's going to be from my other chlorine here and we now check to make sure we have paired my single electrons up I can now make sure that they have full outer electron shells one two three four five six seven eight which it does and obviously this chlorine atom is going to be exactly the same 
nitrogen is slightly different. So it's in group five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and it has three electrons that are not paired. Okay, so I need to pair all these up. So I can do this by adding another nitrogen molecule here. So I'm going to put them as squares here. And my other side, I'm going to have a nitrogen looking like this. So my nitrogen other molecules should be one, two, three around here. I've paired them up here. And this means that we have three shared pairs of electrons. And that forms something. That forms this bond here. Whereas chlorine forms this bond here. And as you're probably aware, one single line represents a single covalent bond. Whereas a triple line represents a triple covalent bond. OK. And then we'll do an ammonium ion. OK. So I'm going to start by drawing ammonia. So ammonium ion is NH4 plus. Ammonia is NH3. So ammonia would look like this with three single covalent bonds attached to my uh, nitrogen. So three single covalent bonds between the hydrogen and nitrogen. However, I can also form ammonium ion by adding a H+. Remember, H plus is a hydrogen atom that has lost one electron, so it becomes positively charged. So I form this. Now, because it's charged, I need to put my brackets and put a positive. And you will notice, unlike the other ones here, 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 and here, that both of the electrons come from the nitrogen atom. And this is a special type of covalent bond called a dative covalent bond. And we can define a dative covalent bond as, and do it in a different color. So when both electrons come from the same atom. OK, and once we form this dative covalent bond, it's like any other covalent bond that you come across. The important thing to remember is that both the electrons come from the same atom. OK, and it's usually when we're adding a H plus onto it. Not always, but usually when we're adding a H plus. OK, and lastly, we will do a hydroxide ion. OK, so the easiest thing to do with our hydroxide ion is to start by drawing my oxygen. Oxygen is in group six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I have one hydrogen uh, because it's OH minus. So I'll just write that here. Really, I should have written the formulas here. This is NH4 plus. Let's go back up. Cl2, N2. OK, so we'll go back to this. So OH minus. So oxygen has six outer electrons because it's in group six. Well, I know that hydrogen has one, so it's going to have a single covalent bond here. However, I've got one electron on its own. OK, and this must mean because there's a negative charge, I must have added another electron. And if it hasn't come from the hydrogen, it's come from somewhere else. Usually, hydroxide ions are in solution. So it's got an electron from something that's in the solution. OK, so if I've added a negative charge, it must mean that my overall charge on my ion is negative. OK, so short and sweet. The last thing I want to go back to is uh, just defining my polyatomic ion, which I talked about here. So we'll define polyatomic ion just down here. So a polyatomic ion can be described as an ion 
that is covalently bonded but has a charge. So within the molecule or within this iron we have some covalent bonds such as here but it's also got an overall charge so it's an iron and our examples might be e.g. NH4 plus OH minus as well as CO3 2 minus and SO4 2 minus. They're just some more examples. Okay, very quick, um, but I hope that was useful and I will see you next time. Okay, bye bye.